Paranormal Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network. Any opinions or comments made by any guest are their own, and they do not necessarily reflect any of the presenters' or network's opinions. It all began with an incident which occurred in 1947. On the afternoon of June 24th of that year, Kenneth Arnold made the first report on flying saucers. On this day, Arnold took off from Chehalis, Washington, and flew toward the Rainier Plateau at an elevation between 9 and 10,000 feet. Over Mineral, Washington, he observed a formation of very bright objects to the north. He radioed ahead that they appeared to be close to the mountaintops and traveling at tremendous speed. Arnold counted nine objects in echelon formation. He observed that they had no tails and described them as saucer-shaped objects. Hello, this is Ronald Kinsella, and you're listening to the Paranormal UK Radio Network, the UK's biggest paranormal network, and this is Paranormal Dimensions with David Young. For me, this is the kind of show that I like doing most, where you basically just have a freewheeling discussion, have a chance to go off on topics. That's what's going to make you an outstanding player in the field. Just keep doing it. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you for that introduction, Ronald. And thank you for those kind words, Peter Robbins. And of course, Ronald Kinsella and Philip Kinsella are today's amazing guests. And actually, two of my favourite people on the planet. Before we bring Philip and Ronald on, uh, I'd like to say thank you for the uh, messages that come in. Uh, if you would like to contact me at any time, my email address is davidyoung2qn at yahoo.co.uk that's David Young, 2QN, at yahoo.co.uk. OK, let's get right into the show and introduce Philip Kinsella and Ronald Kinsella, collectively known as Twin Souls. Hello, Philip and Ronald. Welcome to the show. Hello, David. This is Philip. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Philip. And you, Hello, Ronald, David. are you still... <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is me as well. Hello, David. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. I think we ought to explain to our listeners. Um, you, I was just talking to you off air, and you do sound very alike, so we might have to uh, interject here and then to find out exactly when, which one's talking, but we should be OK. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Tweedle, how... Tweedle, 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. So that was a good example. Which one was that? <laughs> anyway, uh, how are you both doing? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much, David. Um, other than the um, very sad cancellations of yes. the uh, conference this year. But, um, you know, with regards to Laughlin, we, Ronnie and I, are going um, next year. And, of course, the Outer Limits mag- uh, magazine, the conference for that, um, created by Chris Evers, mm. is also next year. And um, so and there's a, we've got another paranormal one that I know you're coming to as well. Um, March, as well. isn't it? March, March, I think it is, yeah. yeah. Oh, we, oh well, that's it. We can wind the show down. Yeah, you've, you've done it all. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, sorry, I'm joking. <laughs> now, I suppose we ought to talk a bit about that, because um, you were going to go to off to the States to Laughlin. Uh, that's Nevada, isn't it? When was that? that? That was pretty recent. That was supposed to have been soon, wasn't it? Um, yeah, that that was actually that meant was to, in um, June, 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 June the 6th. Yeah. June the 6th, but unfortunately... So you'd be there now, probably? still um, maybe well, or maybe it, back by now yeah yeah we would have been back by now but the unfortunately with all the travel restrictions and the uh, red tape that had been imposed uh, had made things very difficult for us mm. and um philip mental bless him you know did contact us to ask us you know guys you know um do you still want to go or do you want to leave it because and, and thankfully we did because um 
all of the uh, British um, UFO researchers that were going to go there couldn't go in the end, as we found out. So I think we've made the right decision to kind of like um, hold back. And Bob Brown from Laughlin has been an amazing guy, really very understanding. So we're really looking forward to, to going in 2022. So it was quite disappointing. And, you know, mm. so we it, had it, was, it was just confusing, David. There's just all this red tape and yeah. all these tests that have to be done and, 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 and being amber, isn't it, as well on amber? We yeah. didn't even know yeah. what that. I mean, you know how I feel about all that anyway. <laughs> I won't go into the details, but um, I yes. think it's all crazy. I mean, because the, the thing is, it's all this stuff about having to go into isolation when you get, I don't know if you'd have had to go into isolation going, would you? Um, I'm, to be honest with you, I mean, when we discovered that it was an amber state and that we really had no idea, we were checking up on the website and it was really confusing. Well, um, basically it was negative. We it couldn't was, go. Yeah, mm. We couldn't go. So, and also the costs of the, um, the tests that, that had to be done. I mean, you, you're talking about a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, you would have been, you know, out of money, out of pocket before you even got there. Yeah. So, um, you know, we decided that, you know, the best thing to do is to hold back and see whether or not these restrictions will be lifted at some point. Um, but it did make me laugh, and I've got to say it. I mean, you know, with all that's going on in the world, um, the... Uh, summit that was held here in England, Biden comes yeah, over and um, doesn't seem to self-isolate. And, um, you know, when you see all the images of uh, all of the people one minute wearing masks, then behind the cameras... All for the cameras, all, yeah, I saw all that. It's the... they, they were all like laughing and joking, being in very close proximity and enjoying themselves. Yeah. So it's kind of, I think that they're sending out the wrong message to the general public. Um, and this is why it's confusing. Um, and I and I don't think that uh, they they've got this really straightened out in any way or form. It's no. a little bit off the place, and it does inconvenience people. And it appears to me that it's one rule for one lot and another rule for another. Yeah, sure. Uh, it it, it, look, it actually looks like they're taking us for fools, doesn't it? You know, because um, well, I think, yeah, I think if you go back into the past, I mean, you know, if you you're talking about the deep state as they're known. And this is something that's been going on for a very long time. We were discussing earlier, weren't we, David, about the UFO phenomena? I mean, mm. you know, just taking that as one example, um, as well as the one that we've been talking about with the word that we can't mention, but with the UFO phenomena, that has, you know, a lot of people have been led to believe, or the deep state were so um, uh, intent in covering the reality, and even to the point where the deep state was using and is connected with the media machine to ridicule the subject. And now, yeah. what's really incredible is that these personalities are coming out now and saying, oh, I kind of like always believed, and all of a sudden become experts. Um, not that there are really any experts within the field of UFO studies, because we still don't know what we're dealing no, with. I agree, yeah. But you see what's happening now. And I even said to Ronnie, you know, look at all these people coming out now. And it's almost as if they think that the general public, um, the sheeple, as it were, or they call us the herd, have been asleep for all these decades. And all of a sudden, you know, oh, yes, look, there could be a possibility that these things are real. And notice how now the media is turning on its side. So it depends what's going to be released on the 25th I, of this month. I don't, I, David, I don't believe they're going to uh, have disclosed <clears throat> as we think. I've always said it. Do we really think they're going to disclose aliens existing or extraterrestrials? They're going to do it in a way where they're going to say, it could be, but it may not be. Yeah, I reckon like, like they would normally do it, yeah. Yeah, it's like playing safe. It's like the, the, you were saying about the, the, um, the gathering of the leaders at that summit. You know, it is a case of... Or, so, or should we say so-called leaders, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the shoe's on the other foot, that was disgusting. Yeah. They're, they're supposed to be setting an example mm. to the people. After all, they initiated the instructions... Uh, there they are, swanning about, doing what they want. Yeah. So when it comes to UFOs, no, I personally don't think... I, I, I'll just say that I'll be very surprised if they do admit the fact that there is an off-world intelligence. I just personally can't see it. Myself. No, I can't see it either. I mean, also, no. also going back to the, the when they flew over to Cornwall, <clears throat> I mean, as you know, in, in this day and age, they could have done a Zoom meeting just as easy 
Everyone, well, yeah. everyone else has been expected to do Zoom meetings, haven't they? You know, not oh, to go anywhere, just stay at home. Yeah, well, I've had to do, like all of us have had to do them uh, all the time. So, you know, at the end of the day, it just goes to show that, you know, the, the word conspiracy theorist, as we know, was created, I think it was by the CIA, the yeah. Central Intelligence Agency, and that, that was in, that's inception came with the death of um, John, John F. Kennedy, um, and it is a psychological weapon to turn the finger of doubt upon the inquiring mind and a safe route to say, well, don't talk to them because they're crazy. Mm, yeah. What's interesting is that um, I think we're seeing a lot of attitudes beginning to change now with regards to the reality of the UFO field, which you know that we're all really very much uh, passionate about. Mm. Um, although even if they did, and I, when I say they, the Pentagon or whoever's behind it, do state lightly that UFOs are real, but we still don't know where they come from. Um, there's going to be a lot more digging questions from people, especially researchers, asking, well, what do you know? And again, because of conspiracy theory, it appears to me that the deep state needs that conspiracy to cover their conspiracy. So my argument has always been who's play, playing whom yeah. in this game of charades. So even if they did come forward with whatever they need to announce, doesn't necessarily mean to say that the people, or certainly researchers, because they're really passionate and driving this, will believe what's being told to them. Mm. So it's, it's a case of devil's advocate, isn't it, Dave? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, feel, I feel they often dig them, uh, make a big story to cover up something else that's going on. You know, I think that happens all the time. Yeah. You know. Yes, well, as we know, that most of the media is faked anyway. Um, well, you know. the, the thing is, is that I can't, if they announce that UFOs are real, which I find very hard to believe, it goes to show they've been lying for decades, haven't they? Yeah. Because they're covering it up. So why now? Why I don't understand why this disclosure is coming out now. Well, if, um, so if, the thing if, is, Ronnie, really, I, I, they, they, UFOs have got to be real, otherwise why would they have been researching them all these years anyway? Yes. You know, it's just the fact that what are UFOs? <laughs> you know, yes. are they uh, foreign aeroplanes that are flying into our own airspaces and US airspaces? Or are they interdimensional or are they extraterrestrial? You know, yeah, it's like that's the question, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I've always stated that with the UFO phenomena, looking at it, I think that there appears to be two stages to this. And as we've understood that the viewing of a craft in most cases, when it's in close proximity to the witness or witnesses, seems to distort the space around it yeah. or time. Mm. And in a lot of cases, I think we're not just talking about a spaceship coming from another planet, which opens up the um, speculation of whether or not these things are interdimensional, as though they are transversing both space and time or dimensions. Because when the viewing of the craft is observed, uh, sometimes there comes a level of high strangeness as though the, uh, the object or the craft, as we call the UFO or AUP, or UAP, sorry, <laughs> they change the name and it's the same thing. Yeah, that's, that's, that was so, so if, you're, if you're searching for UFO online, you won't see the UAP, UAPs, will you? <laughs> no, and it, it's, it's rather like I keep getting that wrong because I'm thinking, well, why have they changed it? Because it's exactly the same thing. They just used a di different acronym. Unidentified aerial phenomena. In case that's everyone's the wondering what it's by <laughs> flying object. I mean, it's, it's still in the air, isn't it? Yeah. Or mostly. This is under the sea. Um, but going back to the uh, experience, the, the second part of the experience heralds um, a complete connection or psychological connection between whatever's behind the force of the object and then ingrains itself within the psyche of the human that's going through the experience. Mm. So, you know, on a theoretical level, I think we're looking at a phenomena that runs much, much deeper, not just a question of, oh, we've got a spaceship coming from another planet. There's many other complex yeah. Uh, issues that need to be explored within this, and that's something that Ronnie and I have both been looking yeah, at. Yeah, I mean, it can't, they're not coming from any uh, other country. We know that because we see them. This technology is 500, perhaps a thousand years ahead of anything we humans mm. have got. I mean, you know, you're not hardly going to say Kim Jong Un is developing them because his missiles explode in midair. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not America, no. it's not. 
So, you know, and that, what they're going to invent, a super state that's underground, say there's a continent we've never found, but it's human. You know, I don't I don't see this working very well, David. I don't see um, any any good to come from it at all. And disclosure, well, not being funny, but the system or the governments, they continuously lie to us. So how can we trust any narrative coming from them or from the CIA or the FBI or whatever? How can we trust it, you yeah. know? I think trust is being shattered across the world at an enormous level. Trust is being destroyed. And, of course, the lie upon lie upon I lie. I agree. I think yeah. uh, all, all governments seem to be a lot of self-destruct calls, don't they? I mean, I think there's, yeah. more, there's more and more people that are waking up to find out that their governments are lying to them, you know. Yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, it, it, it's not just with the UFO field of investigations. It's also the um, psychic phenomena. Mm. And if you really go into this, if you start looking into this, you know, ordinary folk will say, well, I don't believe in it because I believe what I see on the news. Yeah. But if you, start, if you start researching and, you know, yourself looking into this, you begin to realize that this is not something that's just happened in terms of so-called silencing and conspiracy and control. This is something that's been going on for a very, very long time. <clears throat> and as we understand it, you know, with regards to freedom of speech or, you know, the now with regards to social media being controlled, what's very frightening is that... Yeah, I was going to just... say, what freedom of speech? It, it seems to be... Yeah. Oh, the only, you know, you can't do it now. You know, you, you just get kicked. I mean, I've just been on a 30 day ban from Facebook for, for just asking a simple question. You know, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I think the system, I call it the system, um, because it's always controlled by nameless, faceless bureaucrats. You, you never know who they are mm. because they disappear. Yeah. Um, they are very small within their minority, but and they're also very wealthy, and they have control over the media cartel, all these all these uh, companies. And um, what's happening, I think, with a lot of people who, or shall I say, sheeple, as they term us, who are looking outside the box. This is why a lot of researchers um, and explorers are watched, or um, kind of like you know to see what they have, what they know, and who their contacts are. Mm. And, and, you know, this is something that's a reality. I mean, if you take David Icke, for instance, um, and what happened to David um, was awful because they not only banned him from social media, they also um, stopped his books being sold in Waterstones. And I think that's a little bit harsh yeah. because... You know, if, if, okay, so you have a belief and, and you're driving that belief, who is it hurting? People can just switch the program off if they don't want to watch that program anymore of David Icke or they don't have to buy his books. The same with Alex Jones in America. So systematically, you'll see how the media machine come in and they start to very slowly make an example of these, you know, these people, these wonderful people who have what they thought was freedom of speech. And isn't it surprising uh, to, to find out that a lot of what these guys were talking about and have been talking about for a very long time are starting to come into effect? Yes, yeah. it's, becoming, it's becoming quite alarming that we have to admit this, all of us. And we can even see the rise of a of a fascist state. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. seeing it already, I mean, we read every day these ridiculous new rulings about what you should call someone, what you should do. It's pathetic. Mm. It's like, it's like a noddy land nonsense. Yeah. You know, really is getting to the stage. And of course, I always say to this, David, the rise of technology has been used against us because the mobile phone, to me, is the worst contraption ever devised. Mm -hmm. The only good thing about it is to assist <clears> with your inch. Yes. Because every person on this planet now has their, most of them, the ones that are wealthy enough, have them pressed to their noses and they're reading all the fake news. Yeah. It yeah, maybe, maybe that was the, the big plan in the first place, Ronnie, you know, to, the, yes. because, you know, you, you don't see... Yeah, you know, I'll anyone walking down the street now without a phone in their hand and their face is glued to it as they're walking along. And not being disrespectful, but even profile pictures are fake. And is, I'm not going to be rude here, but sucking all the fat out. 
you know, and, and changing their images, uh, uh, take it off, off for here, off for there, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it, it, it's just, and it, it's becoming people are represented on there that are completely not who they uh, say they are. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to have real plastic surgery now, you can just do it on your photos, can't you? <laughs> well, the shock is uh, that moment when you actually meet them in the flesh, that's where all the truth is revealed. That's why you got to be shocked when you met me, wasn't it? No, <laughs> but, but you see the point I'm making, David. It's like these these things, these as I call them, digital demons. Yeah, yeah. You know, these things that are brainwashing the young, and it's also killing social skills. Absolutely. And it's yeah. like social skills. When we were younger, as you know, all of us when we were younger, our, our our age. I mean, I'm not that old, but middle age now. But when we were younger, it was a completely different world. Yeah. And the young people don't seem to understand the world we lived in right. then, <clears throat> uh, where respect and sincerity was uh, much com much more common than it is now. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I, I think that uh, the, the the humanism has just been wiped away from everybody. I mean, I'm, well, I, I mean, I'm a little bit older than, than you two, and I remember being brought up on things like, I don't know, like the Lone Ranger. Where you were given good and evil, and you knew that you wanted to be on the good side, you know. Yeah. But I think kids are being brought up now. They, 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 there's no they, everything's grey, isn't it? There's no sort of real good and evil anymore. Well, you hit the nail right on the head, David. Grey, and you know the greys. Well, grey, yeah. Yeah, great, because when we look at the research, um, you know, our understanding is that these beings are of one mind or one hive consciousness. And what's interesting to see is that perhaps that through this um, this acceleration of technology and also the distancing of human emotions, empathy, that the system wants us to be of one mind with devoid of any form of identity and not able to think outside the box, but, you know, plugged into an AI unit. And, and I'm sure that, you know, this is the way that they want it with regards to the future. And all I can say is that from those people who have awoken, the, many people who are listening to this program and, and like yourself, people have awoken to this. It's not like someone flicking a switch and saying, oh, I see the truth and I see the lies. It's because you have an awareness of the deception that's been occurring. Mm. And as I said, the deception is monumental. It's not just with the things that are happening in our world today, but also with regards to the UFO phenomena and other areas that um, people don't want to talk about. So it is quite a very multi-complex subject, but I think now people, a lot more people, are beginning to become wise to the fact that they're saying, hang on just a minute, there's something not right here, because the system that we serve has done its damnedest to divide us, each of us, mm. from one another. So when, you're, when, there, when there seems to be some progress with something that w is a good thing, all of a sudden something will be planted into the system and then, of course, create an uproar for us yeah. sheeple or herd, as they call us. And then, of course, that bogs everything down. And I do believe that there is this war, this conscious war, um, where the system wants us, you know, sub subjugated into this, you know, murky, horrible mass of confusion and those people who are trying to rise above that confusion it's almost like you can see things in a new light so mm. I, I really do understand how people feel and how frustrating this is I mean don't get me wrong it's really exciting to know that you know to see what the Pentagon will release or whoever's behind this will release it gives us hope in the, in the at least of them to acknowledge that these things are real and that will at least serve us a new platform to to carry on with you know going forward but i think that's as much as we'll get mm. that's if they do well, like the, said, the thing is we know they're real don't we oh yes we do yes yeah yeah but uh, as you were saying about the current state I mean, I've noticed, you know, um, racial hatred has been um, infused by the media. Mm. The media, I said, is all along to blame for conjuring this all up and uh, stirring the black ants with the red ants, stirring them all up, mm. you know, they want war all the time. You know, we can see it. You know, people are afraid to say it. But if you just say it, it's actually quite true. The media have been stirring things up. They're, the, they're one of the worst uh, criminals that the... the, the media itself 
Um, you know, and it's funny, when something rises up about a politician or something, all of a sudden there's something else to take the emphasis yes, off that. Yes, exactly, I think yeah. We, Yes, I think we all can acknowledge that as well. It reminds me of the Hunger Games, you know, David. I don't know if you've ever seen that, the Hunger oh, Games. I haven't, actually. I did try to watch, one, watch it once, and I, I couldn't get into it, but I think I ought to try, you know. Yeah. I think I ought to watch it, <laughs> you know. I think I did, well, I did, have them, I did have them all on Blu-ray at one point, and I think I sold them without watching them. But I think I will have to try and watch those. <laughs> <laughs> the, running, the Running Man was a prime example. I remember of the that, media. yeah, the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. Arnie in, lovely Arnie. I mean, where the media was showing these people this wonderful competition, and you know, it's yeah. all nice on the outside, but when you've got inside, it's all murky and nasty. <laughs> well, that, another thing, a bit like that was Total Recall. Another Arnold Schwarzenegger film, wasn't it? That was kind yeah, of yeah. the same when everything was a bit surreal, and you could go on these perfect holidays and. Uh, you know, be able to be whatever you wanted. <laughs> yeah, I think also the, the really frustrating thing about all of this disclosure and, and whatever area of, um, you know, uh, discretion or, you know, paranoia uh, in those subject matters that we've been told don't really exist. If we go back in time, and it's almost as if the system is also trying to reconstruct the past into a new way, if we go back in time and we go to World War II, for instance, and not getting too deep because you have to be very careful, mm. but no one would have believed exactly what was going on in certain parts of the world with regards to the extinction sure. of, of human beings. It was right on their doorstep. And, and I think that a lot of what the system does is it's able to, you know, deflect any attention away from the reality of what's going on and then kind of like getting the, the public's attention into another area to sidetrack them. Mm. Um, so I think that throughout history, this system, this mechanism or whoever or whatever is behind it um, has infused this uh, divide uh, mechanism with individuals because even on social media you have people attacking other people um, on, on simple matters mm. so I think this is where the frustration lies now I think what's going to be really good though is if if the Pentagon state that yes UFOs are real because we don't know what they are um, it would give me a little bit of warmth not in a cocky way but from all those people that, that have mocked or taken the mickey out of you when you yourself have gone through the said experience. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah we've all thought, been through that, haven't we? Saying, oh, yeah, 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 you're in that case over there. Yeah, um, and then you'll see that either one, they disappear, um, or, or two, they won't ever mention it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, there's a lot of psychological factors um, that have to be taken into consideration with regards to this. And, um, you know, as I said, you know, doing the research onto the deeper levels, not just the here and now, but going into the past of this control mechanism, it, it's also linked with religion, and you can see what, what the system wants to do with the people. But mm. what's really refreshing is that I think now it's wonderful to feel that more and more people are getting, getting a grip as to what's really going on. I and mean, there was a new thing, wasn't there, about them trying to ban protests? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, why would they do that? For, well, for the same they, reason they banned David Oeck and, um, and yeah. um, what's his name, the American one, what you mentioned earlier, I think. Alex Jones. Alex Jones, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you and, know, and they I, just label them as nutcases, don't they, basically. But when you actually yeah. sit and listen to what they're saying, a lot of what they've said in the past is happening now. Well, if you took David Icke's last book, The Answer, and you flick through that book, I doubt very much that you, the information in there is coming from someone that they consider to be a madman. Mm. He is a brilliant, wonderful researcher, and uh, we miss, you know, a lot of the shows that he was doing. Um, but I, I think he's still doing them, isn't he, on, on some other feed somewhere? Yeah, he's got, he's got his own platform called Iconic, uh, which, I, which I have actually uh, joined because it's real, really worthwhile. Uh, but he, he, he does do a fried, um, he does do a, a broadcast every week um, yeah. from his from his own page and everything. So, and as for his selling books, I think he he, he sells his books through Iconic and everything now. So. Or, or, or through probably other avenues as well. So, and Amazon, of course, you can get them. So. Um, yeah, I don't think not... he's um, l uh, yeah, l losing book sales through it. Yeah, you know. yeah. You know, as I said, you know, it's really hard because, you know, he's spent his life mm. 
with regards to researching this, as many other researchers have as well. Um, and, you know, it is frustrating. But what is really lovely, David, is that we have our groups of, of uh, people like, um, <coughs> excuse me, Philip Mental, Chris Evers, uh, you know, you've got uh, Paul Sinclair, You've also got like Earl Grey Anderson, Peter Robbins, Dr. Irina Scott. All there's loads and loads of people within this, uh, you know, symposium of mm. UFO research, and it's really lovely to know that having that connection with them of like minds, yourself included, that we all understand and you know try and bring things to the table in in truly exploring what we're up against. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what we what we're discovering is. Ronnie's even of the same opinion that we are dealing with something that appears to gravitate on an, interven on an interdimensional level of reality. Yeah. I'm hearing that yeah. more and more, actually. The more I speak to people on this show, uh, they all seem to be going the interdimensional route a lot more, more now. Um, yeah, uh, they, they, the tune has changed again, but it's not their fault or no. ours. Admittedly, when I was younger, we would imagine they would come from outer space. I said, yeah, but maybe they are as well. Yeah, but, you know, there's probably a, com yeah. a combination. But you know, maybe some are yeah. coming through interdimensional, and some are using dimensions and space. You know. It's yeah. I mean, I considered because well, we we don't know, as you know, we have, don't know what they are. We know they're not military. Mm. We know they're not of Earth. A thousand years ahead of anything we can conceive. You know, and you'll, you'll have clever clocks who'll say, oh, no, you can't be sure. You can, because when you're in their presence, yeah. when you are in their presence, it is completely otherworldly. I, it's not just seeing them, it's the feeling. It's the, the echo of them, <clears throat> the signature, the impression. You know, because everything you were taught just completely collapses. It falls apart. All science, all everything, all the morals you have completely collapsed. It's quite shocking. Yeah. But we don't know where they're from. I mean, I'm interested. I'm very interested. It's quite possible that they are coming from underwater yeah. as well. I've heard some theories because that's the perfect place to have a base uh, if you were off-world because it's uh, in a region where it's hard to get at. Yeah. You know, so that's interesting, especially Antarctica as well. Um, interdimensional, yes. Um, I think, as we said, more people are opening up to it. I'm, I'm of the opinion it's quite possible because scientists are actually confirming now that it, the worlds brushing against worlds may not be so far-fetched as it was once portrayed in science fiction. So certainly interdimensional, but exactly what they are, we don't know. But it is interesting nonetheless. Absolutely. I mean, the, the water theory of being under oceans is... Really not a new theory, is it? It's been sort of, I mean, I remember reading about yeah. that back in the, like the 60s and 70s, the, the theories of that, because a lot of craft were sit, being seen in the, in the oceans, uh, yes, or, well, or, or, know, or, or vast lakes or whatever. Yeah, we had a friend, uh, d um, and he was a great guy, um, and he was in the Navy, and um, he explained to us that um, he had seen, when he was on the vessel of one of these... Uh, these ships, a UFO coming out of the sea. Mm. And, um, and I, I remembered this guy was someone who was very honest and very down to earth. And he, re he told me and Ronnie that he saw this. So this is something that, that is going back into the, the past. And was this a flying saucer? Yeah, it was like a, a disc. Yeah, it was a disc. It was like a flying saucer. That's what he said, wasn't it? And, and also that, you know, the interdimensional hypothesis, I think, is very interesting through our study and, and analysis of that. Um, because the UFOs, the last ones that we had been privy to seeing on the 9th of April 2016 at 11.15 at night, mm. was witnessed by many other people, and yet nothing came out in the press about it. But when you are in the presence of these objects, there were three of them. They were huge, and they were hovering over our house, um, and I remembered that when I drove up to them and parked the car and got out, there was, a, Ronnie even noticed this, and a, a time where it felt like it just snowed. There was no one around, there was no cars. Now, granted, you know where we live, David, it's not a very busy road, but there are normally cars going up and down. Mm. There's someone, their dog, or coming back from the pub up the road. There was absolutely no one. So we didn't lose any time because I'm, I tracked the, the time as this unfolded. Um, but, you know, what's interesting is that they had come from the village of Marston Mortain where our niece was driving and to cut a long story short we've been at meal and that 
Charlie drove back with her mother and we drove back afterwards and Charlie filmed them on their way and was trying to contact me at the moment they were hovering stationary above us. So when you, when you, when you say to people, you know, I've seen UFOs, it's a whole different story when they mm. are presented above you. It, it, it really is something that you can't explain. And when you're viewing their maneuvers, with the maneuvers that they did, and the way that they moved was phenomenal and awe-inspiring as well. Yeah, well, Philip meant, David, what he meant by it, it, it's as if it had snowed, mm. is that when we spoke, you know when there's been a heavy snowfall mm. and you actually talk, it's like muffled? Yeah, I don't mean that, yeah. So we gathered that what these things were doing, we were like contained in a kind of electromagnetic or some kind of bubble, mm. where, you know, when once you're in that they can somehow stop time, not in a mechanical sense, um, but, but not by your watches, because I have a mechanical watch, but, but in a physical sense, they can somehow slow it down or stop it. Yeah. The point of it was is that that road is always busy. It doesn't matter what time it is you're having. When they were there, those things, there was not a soul. You couldn't hear a pin drop. So this technology is amazing what they're able to do. So that's why we rule out any earthly attributes to these things. Mm. And uh, so it is. You know. Yeah, we haven't seen any since that time. And uh, we're always holding on to hope. But it was and something that, you know, you never forget. Um, and especially the maneuvers of the objects of what they did. And um, what was very interesting, although, you know, we're not adding things on here, or creating our own conspiracy, as it were, because it actually happened. But the on the 10th of April, the very next night, um, we had a, a visit from a helicopter that was flying very, flying sorry, very low over the top of our house, going round in circles. And when we got out to see what the ruckus was, the helicopter was facing because my brother and I went out to the garden to have a look and was facing down so that you could see the two pilots in the cockpit, and it was manoeuvring around in a circle three times before it went off. And it wasn't a, a, a black helicopter, like a military helicopter. It wasn't a police helicopter. That much I did clock. Um, but it, it just always seems to come with a level of high strangeness. Mm. And could it be, if anyone reported it, like, you know, whoever it was, they would just be told, oh, it was the helicopters, because some people, thank God, we record everything now. Some people can get mixed up and say, oh, there were some helicopters. I did, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it, it just really is bizarre. And uh, Dr. Arena Scott in America, um, as you know, she's written uh, quite a number of UFO books. Yeah, she's been on I, this show, actually, a few shows, yeah, probably about amazing. over a year or so ago. Yeah, worked at Battelle and um, and uh, under the flying uh, disc banner of Philip Mental's publishing house. I mean, she's had uh, helicopters over her place, and she lives in a very remote area. Mm. So, you know, I think a lot of people, uh, for, you know, reasons unknown, um, are being tracked or monitored. And it doesn't make you mm. special, unique. It just proves that... You know, you're you're being monitored. I'll tell you something. Where you know where I used to live at uh, in Suffolk in Cherry Trees, we used to get a, a, a helicopter circling over us. You know, and I used to say to Jill, uh, I'm sure they're watching me. You know, <laughs> maybe they were. <laughs> but you know these these spheres. I mean, this is what they were, and they were quite low when we saw yeah. them, David. Mm. And they're, they're the, about 90 foot up. They weren't small. They were quite visible. They were quite uh, low. Mm. But I said to Philip, and I I, I maintain this as well in the book I've just re released, um, is the fact that uh, we made reference, I made reference to them being perhaps like the Foo fighters mm. uh, like, um, that used to tell the Second World War aircraft, dog fights and things. They, they rep The pilots reportedly seeing these strange spheres following them. So is it possible we're seeing that these are what they are yeah. uh, in a manner? And are they, as I... Uh, 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 mentioned uh, electronic eyes or some kind of yeah. influ outward influence to these things we call alien. You know, I remembered I went on another radio show, and I'm going to be honest with you, I absolutely hated it. It was one particular one. I won't mention it. <laughs> but uh, what I stated about the electronic eyes, the host actually sarcastically mused, oh, did it have eyelashes? Oh. And I really hated that. But you get the general gist mm. when I refer to electronic eyes yeah. being some kind 
camera. Yes. So is it possible these things, they, I mean, it, it would make absolute sense. Yeah. You know, it would send these things out to watch us all the time. It, it would make perfect sense. But the funny thing is, do you remember um, the, the, the Rendlesham um, case, obviously, with, with Colonel Holt? Yeah. He actually said about oh, yeah. a blinking eye, didn't he? So you never know, yeah. something like that could well be, you know, I, I think it makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Uh, yeah. And obviously these yeah. uh, Foo Fighters, um, back in the war days, uh, the the enemy thought it was our secret weapon, and we thought it was yeah. a German secret weapon, didn't we? Yeah. And it yeah. was only yeah. after the war they found out, well, what were these things then? Yeah, but they realised that the objects didn't attack anyone, and of course that's what puzzled them. Um, and then of course Churchill and uh, those supreme commanders of the time were covered the whole thing in, a, in the classified documents of top secret, but it was spoken about. So mm. we can see that we're dealing with a phenomena that's been around for a very long time. And, um, you know, it would be really fascinating to know, you know, if we glean any new information from the release uh, from the Pentagon, whether or not they've determined themselves. And, and, you know, a little bit of respect to whomever, if they do release the information that we're looking at, um, if they do that, that's a big if, if they also conclude that these things are perhaps multidimensional, because this will be, make us aware that, you know, we see things in a third-dimensional matrix, we're in a universe that's, you know, to a degree third-dimensional, that this may prove that there are higher dimensions of reality, or even lower sure, dimensions. Yeah. I mean, what, what was that date you said? Was it, the, tw- I, I, was it the 26th? I'm, just I'm sure it's the 25th. Right. This Friday. This Friday. But, um, so as this show yeah. goes out, you'll know the answer by then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to we might have to duck. Um, but certainly with regards to the interdimensional uh, hypothesis, um, you know, I always say that, you know, people wonder how these things come through and how certain UFOs integrate into our reality. I think that the whole paradigm of this is multi complex and I think trying to explain this to someone who doesn't understand is gonna have a, a quite a problem digesting yeah. this. Because as, I, as I've argued many times before, the phenomena is uh, deep-seated within two parts to its construction. And where these beings or entities, as we call them, that are still a puzzle to many researchers, um, are able to interact on an individual level with the, with the person going through the experience. Mm. And this is why going back to Betty Barney Hill, you know, they had what they termed was a physical experience and then the actual abduction came through in dream state as though the entities behind it had submerged the uh, encounter deep within the human psyche. So I think it's going to be a little bit frightening if they say, yes, the UFOs are real, they're here, um, but hey, um, you know, we've got some badass aliens out there who can abduct you and put you through mm. these things. <laughs> yeah, I am I'm of different opinion of that, David, because I, I, I mean, I, I said to Philip, and I've written about this in this book I've uh, had released, The Digital Demon, is the fact that it just surprises me that these people who have been allegedly taken by the aliens, uh, there are so many different types, and I'm wondering to myself whether it's actually them able to change their faces um, to suit what's in vogue. Mm. I mean, the greys now are quite popular, aren't they? Whereas before in the 50s and 60s, they were the Nordics, the golden-haired, blue-eyed, and... Before them, I don't know what they were, but the ships... The little green men we used to have years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little green men, or aliens. Yeah, you don't hear too much about yeah. those nowadays, do you? Yeah, but the, the ships as well. I mean, when you look at the classic discs, the flying saucers, mm. and they change the, the, the more common triangular ships... Um, it, it just seems to be changing. And is this something to do with what they feel we should see or how we can interpret them? You know, if they are interdimensional, you know, if they're over that side, perhaps their uh, structures are so different from us. And when they enter our world uh, through a dimensional uh, shift, um, they become physical or corporeal. Yeah. In a manner that uh, it would illustrate their their technological clout, you know, you've got to consider all aspects. You have people, as you well know, who will say, "No, no, 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 no. We've got it all figured out." They don't. No, of None they don't of them. I mean, it's good. even when you've studied this, or say studied it, read about it, or learnt as much as you can about it, it's still very yeah. difficult to get your head around a lot of it. Anyway, you know. Yeah, I think David also that 
you know, with regards to the phenomena, if it's coming from, let's say, a higher dimension, it's going to have to morph somehow into this reality. And I think it's possible, even conceivable, to assume that perhaps the phenomena uses the energy that we have to infuse with its um, energy. Mm. I've, I've always argued that, you know, we bring things into reality through the mind that we can't see. And think of the human brain as like the, the f mobile phone network system. You've got the physical hardware and you've got the, the signals that you can't see. And those signals are attached to the hardware, work through the hardware, and then decipher the information from the higher spatial state of reality into this one so that you can understand. So it's possible to assume that these energies or forces that are operating outside of our third dimensional matrix are somehow lowering themselves into our vibrational reality and then of course accommodating them into this material matrix. I mean we, we don't know. But Fashioning themselves into a mechanism of sorts yes when they enter this realm. Yeah. I mean things need bodies to move around in the physical sense of the three dimensional world. Yeah. If they're from the fourth or fifth dimension that would be quite different. Uh, as Philip Mantle said when I spoke to him about this he said a simulation Philip like the Borg from Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was not to get a Star Trek in, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's interesting, though. I mean, you know, we 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 don't have any answers to this. Mm. We just have the, uh, theoretical content to try to understand why it's so multifaceted um, and why it comes in varied forms. And and this is something that that's kind of like a little bit of a problem. Either we have a complete highway of alien beings out there that are very elusive. Uh, but they all seem to be coming to the Earth system. But what we want to know is, you know, what what ones are we dealing with? And, of course, it opens a can of worms of, of where they come from, their religion, their belief systems, their technology. You know, it, it's so fascinating. And, and the, the biggest question to me is why? Why would they come here? You know, are, well, are we really that interested? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> are, we, are we really, though, no, Philip? It's, it's true, isn't it? And Bonnie, it's, it's true. Are we really that interesting to them? Yeah, this raises another interesting point you've just brought up, David. I mean, when I researched, uh, uh, did a bit of research for my, my book, The Digital Team, and I actually looked back at the 50s and 60s where when the aliens arrived, they proclaimed their concern of world peace, basically atomic warfare. They were very concerned about it. But why? I mean, you know, they, they reckoned it would cause some cosmic rift in the universe. I don't believe that at all. No. Well, because unless you look at it from a dimensional point of view, because if, 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 if they're existing on a, on, you know, in the same, how do I explain it? <laughs> you know, in the same sort of realm as we are, but in different dimensions, yeah. maybe yeah. an atomic war would affect them in that way. Yeah, but I came up with an answer to that, because if that was so, if that was so um, prominent, they would have disabled them themselves. Well, that was known. Mm -hmm. Then we build more, they disable them again. We can't build them a slap on the hand, we just leave yeah. it. They didn't. So that rules that out completely, David. Yeah. Well, I think also the, one of the main subject matters that I've been very much involved in are the greys. And they're interesting uh, to see what these beings may represent. And, you know, I can't conclude anything and I can't prove anything. But one of the things we have to take into account is the fact of their secrecy. Their modus operandi is concealed through, uh, you know, screen memories. They come like uh, shadows across the wall. And this is this may be why we're not able to have any form of physical um, proof of their existence, because they operate outside our time space continuum and that they somehow hijack the conscious or psychic internet, as I call mm. it. So, you know, looking at the subject matter in a very complex form with regards to one species, we call species because that's all we can label them with, are the greys. And I know people have their own ideas about they're this or they're that. Well, we really don't know. But if we look deep into the research, then we begin to find that there does appear in some cases a more sinister reason of what do these beings want. And this is this is to do with, you know, replication. So if we clone ourselves, which I believe the clo the greys themselves have done, this also opens up another area of contemplation with regards to the soul, consciousness, 
creation and all these types of things. And I think within ufology, a lot of the subject matter has been condensed into a small box without opening it and looking into the widest spectrum of what, what we could be possibly dealing with. Yeah, like a jigsaw puzzle. There's many pieces and trying yeah. to put them together to form a picture. But there are people out there who don't want to do that. They're tunnel vision. They're just going to hold on to their piece and say, no, this is it. Mm-hmm. We need we need a lot of pieces put together. And that's what I love about it, Dave. It's, it's very... Uh, it's very um, what's the word? Multi-complex. Multi-complex. But you have to look at every aspect. It's possible that the aliens did visit the people, but they lied to them, deceived them about atomic warfare. Yeah. God knows. But we have to consider every aspect of it. You know, perhaps the people believe this is what they were seeing. Mm. You know, there's so much to it. It's very deep. Mm. Well, going back to what they're going to be releasing from the Pentagon. Now, I've heard quite a few people say they're going to fake an alien invasion. How do you feel about that? Well, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm, this, this is really quite worrying. Because when you start to feed something into the social media, people then get it into their minds there's going to be a fake alien invasion. And if there was a real, real alien invasion, how would the individual determine whether or not it is a faked one or the real one? But see, this is, this is exactly the problem that we have. So, you know, I'm not saying there's going to be an alien invasion. I'm not going to say there's going to be a fake alien invasion. But it's the perfect camouflage. Once again, we see the conspiracy yeah. that is now mucking things up. So we won't be able to differentiate fact from fiction. And, and, and this is where I think we have a real problem or, or real uh, issues with, with regards to this. And once again, the system has divided this. Unfortunately, where humans are concerned, we're entitled to our opinion. Of course we are. Um, but as researchers like yourself and ourselves and many other brilliant minds, we're trying to determine the cause of what is real and what is not real. And this just does not help. So, you know, how are we to know if there was an invasion next week or next year? People will say, oh, no, it's, it's a fake alien invasion. So, you know, what's going on? Who's planting this information? Mm. Where is this from? So th- this this really causes why, a lot of why damage. Would, why would they do that, though? Why would they invent an alien invasion, David? Well, why, do you... the, from, from, the, from what I've heard, um, that they would want to cover up other things because that would take them the, the, the biggest priority, wouldn't it? If they really wanted to, oh, we're, 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 we're losing credibility in something, oh, we won't go into what, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, you, you know, if they wanted to really hide that and actually go into and to cover it all up, it would be quite easy to use a, an alien invasion because yeah. that would all be forgotten I've, about. Uh, I've never believed that myself. I don't think that's going to happen. I, no, I don't. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I, I can't see it happening either. No, I can't. And what, what technology would they use to do that? I mean, that would be an enormous... Uh, F resources used to fake an alien invasion. Yeah, I mean, I, but, I mean if, uh, to be honest, though, I mean, we, we've all seen what they can do with Hollywood. And if they told us that, oh, New York's just been attacked by aliens and it's been destroyed, oh, yeah, you know, there is that. and yeah. the communications have all been cut off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the majority the majority of people living in this country would have to believe it because they've just been told on the BBC. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. well, it's what they did with Trump, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, I think, David, you know, we can safely assume that through the study of ufology, uh, you know, and not just since the famous Roswell inception in 1947, <laughs> but going further back, because we know this has been going on for a long time. There's been no sorry. Can you can you hear that? Oh, What's did you hear that? It's all right. No. Well, I'm going to explain to people, if, any, if anyone heard a strange noise going on downstairs, uh, that's my wife. I think we've just scored another goal with the football. Because it's... <laughs> uh, she's watching, it, well, we she's watching England play, so I'm sorry if you heard that just then. But sorry, Philip, carry on. No, well, we haven't scored anything with regards to the UFO phenomenon yet, have we, I just thought in case it got picked up, I've just heard a... Um, cheering and shouting. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with, with, there's been no evidence to suggest, in, in all fairness to these aliens or these species of aliens, of any form of takeover bid. If that is happening, then it's being done silently with no one being aware of it. Mm. And so I think it will sniff suspect if the BBC, <coughs> well, excuse me by um, <coughs> saying that with the BBC. Or the ITV. <laughs> uh, yeah, other oh, flavours yeah. are available, yeah. 
Um, I, I think that, you know, uh, it's just a cop out. I think people will sniff suspect with regards to that. So um, so whatever's happening, the aliens, especially the greys, are intent in keeping the phenomena concealed mm. and trying very hard to cover their tracks. So I doubt very much they'll, they'll want a warring faction with us humans because they will win um, because we can't we can't catch up with their crafts. They seem to out outmaneuver military um, aircraft. You know, they they are they appear to be so far ahead of us in terms of technology. Well, they have been for many years, haven't they? Going right back to like the fifties, that they were outmaneuvering our airplanes. You know. So we wouldn't stand a chance no. unless, of course, you know, you know, they, the Americans did or whoever did stage this or the military and say we've won the war like Independence Day, we've saved the day and you don't need to ask any more questions about the aliens because they've gone. Um, I don't know. I don't believe it myself. I may eat humble pie, um, but it will be interesting to see if that did happen. Yeah. I mean, how did they defeat the aliens in Independence Day? Wasn't that a Windows 95 virus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... Come on, I mean, you know, I mean it was a good, it's a good yarn, but it, it just it turned a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. That Hollywood, though, I mean, you've got to give it to Hollywood. Um, they've got some wonderful actors, but they just have to go along with their bosses of what they want that's screened. Um, but I think, to be honest with you, I hope, I really pray that we do have some form of contact with certain extraterrestrials. That would be fascinating. Mm. Many, many of us will be willing to reach out and understand on an empathic level what we're dealing with. But unfortunately, you see, you get the military that pushes in there. They'll take over. They'll slap patents on it and they'll control it and they'll keep people away from them. Um, and I, I, I always have this uh, impression if they want to come, why don't they just do it like on V, Kenneth Johnson's mini series of V. And I will say I have to boast a little here because... Kenny Johnson, he likes to be known as Kenny, the creator of, of V, uh, had been in touch with Ronnie, and Kenny had allowed Ronnie to use images from his book and talked about his V Excellent. series. Brilliant. So, and I, and I will say here that, um, you know, if if they did come, do it in style, come in those big motherships. Yes, <laughs> that, yeah, that, exactly. That, yeah. That, that was the prime. He was his was the best beyond Independence Day. They copied him because V was actually an incredible. Um, portrayal of what could happen whereas when the aliens came they actually wore smiles and they were just so lovely mm. and yet behind all that there was a nasty agenda in place you know it's rather like <laughs> it's rather like us really that was one of the best prime examples of you know if I hadn't seen that I know there have been a few other things before but if we hadn't seen that which was so damn popular because it was brilliant you would never have thought that really I suppose mm. you know you, this is what ke keeps us guarded yes if we do have visitors and God hope that they are benevolent you will always have that thought in the back of your head you know when they're smiling at you if they have faces like us and they're shaking your hands you know are they are they as trusting as they appear, yeah. you know? I mean, that was quite there is, there is also the theory, well, it's not really a theory, um, but they do actually put it out there for you, right in your face, don't they, that they're telling you things. Yeah. So that you'll see yeah. it, you know. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. doing that all the time in movies, apparently, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like you said about yeah. the Hunger Games earlier on. Yeah, I mean, it's subliminal programming. Um, I think, to be honest with you, that, you know, it, it would be really exciting. I, I would hope and pray for the day that I wake up in the morning and um, pull back the blinds and there they are above us. That will be a pretty exciting time. But I think... As long as they us all, that's right. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> or, or taken us over like the body snatchers. <laughs> um, but I think the reason also is that as a species, we have to be very honest here. Um, and people, a lot of people don't like honesty. They, they hide behind half-truths or downright lies. Mm. As a species, in essence, we're not very nice. We're not very trustworthy uh, as a human race. And, and, and on the other side of the coin, you know, we, we just have to look at our own history to see how savage and violent we are. Um, you know, most people can't even get along with one another, uh, you know, on a normal level yeah. of, of, of awareness. Uh, let alone with countries warring all the time. So maybe this is why certain factions have concealed themselves within the shadows so as not to interfere. 
Uh, but I think there should come a time or a point, certainly, within our human evolution where, uh, you know, a lot of people are ready and they are right for, for that meeting or that connection link. Not, not within the shadows, but or face to face, as it were. And, and I think that uh, many people would be fascinated uh, to link with an extraterrestrial species. I know Ronnie and I, yourself and many others, will be like a kid in a sweet shop, you know. It'll be a dream come true. Um, with regards to that. So I'm, I'm hoping, praying, that there will be a day within our life where they do actually reveal themselves. But I, for some reason, I can't see that happening just yet. No, I can't either. But um, as I say, we, we can only live in hope, and uh, that, that, that is an amazing dream, to actually wake up one morning and you've got those giant spaceships over you. It's, uh... <laughs> it's the only way to do it, David. If, if, you know, if this, just, you know, this would answer all our questions, one, that they are here, and two, you know, what do they know? Um, you would be in awe of them, of course. Mm. Uh, I would, and I'd, I'd want to ask them, and I sound silly, but, you know, about God, about their creation, yeah, about yeah. where they come the from. Universe. The they universe. Might, they might be much wiser in how we know it all started, you know. I mean, there, there would be a, a, a fountain of knowledge, hopefully. And they may not have all the answers, but they're certainly a bit much smarter than we are, you know. Yeah. Or they're here to find out from us. Maybe they think we know all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. I, I think also it's really incredible because... You know, whatever happens, whatever comes out, is going to cause some controversy anyway. And there's a lot of excited researchers. Oh, and, yeah, and I, I think, you know, if they just admit, they just say, yes, we believe that they are real, is a big, big step forward from what we've had before, because all we've had ever had within the media is ridicule. You know, the X-Files music coming on, people being made fun of. Um, you know, I know, I know you get a lot of fake people and disinformers and people who lie, but I think as researchers we can, you know, filter them out very easily. Mm. It's the genuine cases and the genuine researchers that really want this more than anything, because it gives us hope. Yeah, it's like um, in the past, it's this trust, we go back to trust again. If the Roswell ship, which is the crowning glory of the UFO phenomena, was real, which I believe it did, you know, the military there announced that they had announced they had captured a flying disc to retract the testimony, to then say that it was a weather balloon. Well, if that's a military group in charge of atomic warfare, and they can't they can't identify a weather balloon, they mistake it for a flying saucer, then God help us, David. Yeah. You see where this is going, you know, how can, how can there be trust with our own people? I think it's being shattered to a degree. Yeah. And, you know, what it will be, as Philip said, it will be interesting to see what they come up with, with this apparent, is an alleged disclosure. But I don't think, personally, we're going to get much from it at all. No. I mean, that's, that's obviously where the distrust started coming in in the first place, because they, they released it, it was in the newspapers. Uh, and then the next day it was all squashed, wasn't it? So, uh, yeah, yeah. so yeah, like so, you say, it was yeah. a nuclear, ba well, at the time, uh, an atomic base. So, uh, yeah. you know, what, what does that say yeah. to you? Yeah, how can they mistake that for a weather balloon? My goodness. Yeah. Well, it could be that they just released information stating that we're not sure what UFOs are. They could be off-world but we're not sure if they belong to another country, and then the wheel goes round again. See, I think an important thing here was that Mac Brussel was used to seeing um, weather balloons because yes. he'd seen them crash on his land before, hadn't he? Uh, and yes. I think that was quite an important statement. Yes, that's right. Well, you know, we, we, a lot of people have done a lot of digging into that, and I think, to be honest with you, um, that was a true event, and I think the military didn't know how to deal with it at that time, and then they, they quickly orchestrated a cover, and that was implemented through uh, the much and very controversial um, MJ-12, um, which was the list of luminary scientists and military officials who had acted as the board of consultants with regards to the technology and the organic matter that was discovered on, on and around the craft. Um, so I think, you know, this is going to be really interesting and we just have to wait and hope and see whether or not they're going to be honest with it, with a lot of researchers and release that information. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, it's <laughs> well, I guess we ought to mention that we were all going to get together for the OLM conference, the Outer Limits conference, uh, in 
was it August or September? I can't remember. But anyway, August, but anyway that, that has actually been cancelled and been put back to next May now again because it was actually this one was actually cancelled from last year, wasn't it? From last August. So yeah. that will be like getting on for two years, won't it? Um, it's been cancelled for. So yeah. as I say, well, that's another big disappointment in the UFO field. Um, where yeah. we we're all hoping nice. to get together. Yeah, it'll be nice for us all to catch up, wouldn't it? For us all to get together again. Yeah, yeah it's like a big family, isn't it? I mean, you know, you meet the people that you're connected with through social media, even the audience. We're all, we're all important. Everyone's, you know, important in this. It's not just about the speakers. It's also about the people that are there because people like to talk and share ideas. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful. So I, I think it's a really nice way of, uh, of com communicating with everyone. Yeah, I, I, I guess that we could also uh, mention that before we go to the OLM conference in May, uh, in March, you've got the Festival of the Unexplained coming up in Boswell this, this, yes, this year. Yes, Philip Mendel. <coughs> yes, excuse me. <coughs> Philip Mendel um, asked us if we would go, and then the, uh, co the coordinators of that um, invited us, so we're very honoured to be going to do a talk there. And so there are three conferences next year. There's that one, and then there's the Laughlin one, and then there's the OLM that Chris Evers uh, puts together, a fine man. And, um, of course, there's uh, Outer Limits magazine, um, which is uh, very informative as well with regards to the, uh, you know, the UFO and paranormal subject. I think it's really wonderful to have these outlets and these, these guys that are so involved with, their, with what's going on. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the festival is unexplained. I think it's, it's actually over a three-day period, is it? It's like the Friday, Saturday, and I believe it goes into Sunday as well. Yes, that's right. I hope yeah, it does, anyway, because I've bought my ticket. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, it's, it's more based with paranormal, but they asked us if we would go and do a talk on the UFO subject. And, and what's interesting is we have to keep the uh, subject matter different from one conference to the other. Right. So I'll be talking about um, the research that we did at Rendlesham there and, um, you know, back in the uh, late 2000s. <laughs> and uh, the, the experiments we did with regards to that area. So that's going to be, we're really looking forward to that. It's going to be interesting. On the, um, I think it's the Friday night, there's also a seance apparently, um, which I, I think there's going to be like a celebrity seance uh, included. Oh. Um, oh. Are you going to be involved in that? I have no idea, David, I'm afraid, but I think they might be able to bring me back from the dead <laughs> on some level. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just wondered because uh, because you're you're being the the uh, medium or the or the uh, sensitive, if you like, what well, which whatever word you'd like to use. I just wonder if you'd be doing a, being the medium for it. I I don't know. I mean, I as you know, I'm black and white. Yeah. I don't suffer falls. No, no, so no. I just, um, So I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what what occurs. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I, I mean, on the ticket that I've uh, apparently you arrive on the Friday, um, and. I think they they take you. They're going to take us out to some locations, um, including the ticket. And I think in the evening is a séance. But uh, obviously, if you haven't, if you're not involved in that, I just wondered. Yeah, I haven't had all the details sent through with regards to what's going on. I've just uh, confirmed the talk, yeah. and Ronnie has as well. And of course, the date changes because it all changed at the last minute, unfortunately. So I think they'll get in touch and send us a programme. I think for their guests it's more important than we get mm. the rundown of what we are and what's going on. So yeah. Because of course they've got some American guests coming over for that as well, aren't they? So. Oh, right. Oh, as, as I understand yeah. it, yeah. It'll be a great weekend. It will be a great time, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. It will. Now also, you've just done a show with Peter Robbins, which I was very uh, Pleased to hear, because yes. uh, Peter Robbins has got his own radio show now called, I think it's Meanwhile Here on Earth or something, is it called? That's right, yes, it's an amazing show and he has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, folks on there, wonderful programmes. Peter Robbins is a, a wonderful Yeah, we, we all love Peter Robbins. He's... Oh, we love him to death. And, you know, he's got such a wicked sense of humour, mm. we love it. But what is beautiful about uh, his shows is that... You know, it, it's very, meanwhile, here on Earth, his shows are very um, very personal, very touching, mm. and it gets into the, the life of the individual, you know, not just about their interests in UFO, but what makes the person who they are. And I think that's really interesting. So we really enjoyed doing that, and we were very honoured to be asked by Peter 
to to go on his show. So that that's uh, an, another feather in the cap, which is very much appreciated and uh, uh, an, an honour as well. Yeah, he's a lovely chap. I love his laugh. When when he starts laughing, yeah. it's infectious. I start yeah. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and also, of course, Peter Robbins is is going to be a guest speaker, or the, probably the, the star guest speaker at the OLM conference in Hull in May. Absolutely, and uh, well deserved for him because you know he is uh, a man who is very loyal, uh, very giving, and very uh, knowledgeable um, with his information and contacts within the world of ufology. So um, you know he is he is a gracious gentleman and a wealth of information. A bit like Philip Mantle here in England, you've got Peter Robbins in America. So he holds the torch for truth, and um, you know, and bless his heart, he's a good man. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if anyone's listening to this in England and would like to get tickets uh, for the OLM conference, it's the Outer Limits magazine conference. Um, if you can't find it online, get in touch with me and I'll put you in the right direction. Because, um, as I say, you don't get many chances to see Peter Robbins. And also yourselves, Philip and Roger yes. Kinsella. And I think there's a few other people that uh, you'd probably enjoy yes. seeing over that weekend. So if anyone would like to yes. get tickets and they can't find it, just get in touch with me and I'll point you in the right direction. But uh, I think yeah. in to wind up, we've got to talk a little bit about your 3D modelling, Ronnie. The 3D printer? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because as you know, David, I'm an artist. Um, I use digital art and I absolutely love it. Um, I recently got myself a, 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 a printer, a 3D printer, because... Uh, when I uh, create my artwork on my PC using ZBrush, and there's no cheating to it, there's no cheating. I have actually been called a cheat by someone, mm. um, which was disgusting. When they actually look into ZBrush, you'll see that you cannot cheat with it. You just can't do it. It's like plasticine. Mm. It's just basically molding characters out of plasticine, but digitally. Uh, I, I like it because you don't get your hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel. I didn't like getting my hands dirty either. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but it's clean. And what I got, um, I've also got a Cintiq first, um, which is basically a huge tab. It's a 22-inch Cintiq, which is a system where you can actually use the brush on it. You, you can draw with a pen on it. You have a visual. So it's not like using a tablet and looking at the screen all the time. You're, you're actually applying your pen directly on the screen and working in real time. But the 3D printer is an addition. And I can now actually... Uh, 3D print the characters, although I'm finding, as with everything, there are limitations with it to a degree, but it's very clever. And uh, I started by doing some of the reptilians I've created, uh, the monster effects, um, uh, to see how they fare. Uh, it does take about eight hours to print out a model, depending on the size of it. But they're very clever. So mm. I know I've seen them. I've seen they're, they're amazing, actually, Ronnie. Really. Yeah. I've, I've now developed one of the greys. You know, these people have seen these greys. Mm. Um, and so I've, uh, true, true to their, hopefully their, their description of them, uh, I've developed one of them, which I'm going to print out very soon. Because I do them large, I do them in parts. So uh, this is where it's leading me to, to actually p produce models, mm. which is, you know, it's amazing. This technology is incredible, David, because, you know, um, perhaps 15 years ago, you would never have dreamed of actually uh, building models at home yourself mm. from your own creation, you know. I mean, we had Airfix and all well, that. Well, when, when, they, when they first came out, I thought, a 3D printer, how does that work, <laughs> you know? And it, it takes yeah. a little bit of, to get your mind round it, doesn't it? Um, I, I always yeah, think, because you think of a printer with a bit of paper, you think, well, how do you, you know... Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's like um, it's like a printer head. Think of a printer head, and it starts from the base, and it it, it what it does it releases a, a plastic, uh, a thread of plastic. You get it on a reel. It runs through. It heats up the plastic, and depending on what you've created, the computer will decipher that into a plastic model. Mm. But the printer head starts from the base. And it works up very slowly, very, very slowly. It works up. The trouble with that is, as I said, limitations for me, but we overcome them, is that if you have a model and you have arms outstretched midway, they need support. Oh, okay. Because once the print head reaches that point, if it starts aligning across, there's no support. So the plastic will just droop. Yeah. So 
So it comes with supports, which are wonderful, but the only trouble with the supports is, is that when it's done, you've got to take them off. And depending on the density of them, that can be a bit of a problem. Um, I've tried to lower the density, but that didn't work because the, <laughs> the arms just sag. So, or you can print it flat, but then you will still have supports holding it up from the rear. Mm. So, but you know, these things, they're, 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 it's trial and error, David, you know, and, but it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I mean, some of the results I've seen what you've done, I think they're fantastic. They really do. Uh, oh, thank you, David. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's come, my art has come a long way. I love, as I love drawing, especially the aliens. Or well, that's it. I mean, your artwork alone, what, what I've seen of, oh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And you can obviously see it on the covers of your books and inside as well. Um, yeah. Thank but, you. Um, yeah, I'm well. looking forward to seeing them in real life. I can't wait, actually. But well, I, I guess to close down, we also speak a little bit about y your books. I mean, Philip's got uh, your last two books were You the Public Deceived. Um, yeah, the You the Public Deceived, the Grand UFO Deception. Grand, yes, it, uh, that was the rest yeah, of the title I was trying to think of. Yeah. <laughs> Available from Philip Mantle's Flying Disc Press on Amazon as hardback, paperback, Kindle, and audio. And the other one was Guardians of the Dead. Yeah. And, Roddy, you've got the Archons and the Digital, digital Demon available. That's right. The Digital Demon, that's uh, by Philip Mantle's Flying Disc Press. That's hardback, paperback, audio now, and Kindle. And that is autobiographical as well. It goes back into mine and Philip's childhood mm. when we were kids, uh, little naughty monsters, <laughs> no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it goes into all that, you know. I felt that perhaps if you described your character first before referring to things based on the paranormal, it might make it a bit easier, a little bit more trusting there, you know, to just to someone get a picture of your character though, and who you are. Yeah, you sure. Know? So, you know, so that, that and, and, and I'm working on now a science fiction book because um, I love science fiction and the idea just popped into my head so I've started working on that. It's basically a horror sci-fi book. It is to do with the aliens. I will also say that the greys are involved in this but it's very dark David, very dark. So you can imagine the artwork for the cover of that. I know the archives <laughs> was very dark anyway, wasn't it? And uh... <laughs> Yes. Yes, they were based on the demonic force. Yes, yeah. I, I quite like that one. That that's uh, that was uh, uh, before this pandemic, and it was about them chipping people. Yeah, uh, they were pushing to get them chipped. It's not an it's, it's an old tune, but it's just the way you portray it, or the way you you actually narrate it. You know. Yeah, that's a fantastic uh, example of your artwork as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you, David. Well, it's been fantastic talking to you both. Thank you very much for sparing the time, Philip Ronald. Um, and also, Thank you've got you. your own show, Twin... Twin Souls. Yeah, Twin Souls, that's right. I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> 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 but, uh, have you got any... Yes. Uh, you're still doing them, aren't you? On yes, this, On yes, this very yes. same network, by the way. Yes, yeah, we're still doing them, and, um, you know, the, we, we have a lot of, like yourself, a lot of interesting guests coming on to promote their work, their books, their beliefs, their experiences, so it's something that we've really been looking, uh, you know, looking forward to for a very long time. I know there was a spate of about, um, about seven months where both of us weren't very well, so mm. we couldn't do it, we went through some several health problems, but thankfully we've got past that point now. So, um, yeah, bless you, David. And also, Thank we're you. very lucky with the way things are in the medical world at the moment. So I think you were, you were kind of lucky that it happened before all this, uh, the world went pear-shaped, yes. as I like to say. Yes, that's right, yes. Um, but for the grace of God, we have our health. That's the main thing that's above everything else. And, you know, and uh, just keep ourselves strong sure. and uh, continue with the work that we're all doing, the fabulous work that we're all doing, yeah. yeah. Well, especially you two. I know you, you're always at it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm so looking forward to seeing you both again, and uh, we'll we'll get together soon. And um, yeah, I can't wait actually. Yeah. Two of my favourite people on the planet, you are. No, oh, bless your heart, David. <laughs> Thank you, and you are as well. Bless you. That's really nice. You know, we just yeah. No, I know, don't just say that. You know, I mean it. So. I think you know if you remain honest and in you have integrity. And you, you know, you, you carry yourself to the best of your ability, the way that you are. Uh, you can't go wrong. I know people have their disputes and their, you know, their, their fallouts. Oh, yeah, I mean, we can't, we can't agree on everything. I mean, no, I mean, you no, and I, I will probably come to a point and think, oh, no, no, I don't think that's right. Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, as I say, I mean, but we're humans, aren't we? You can't agree on absolutely yes. everything, so. 
But, uh, that's right, yeah, bless you. Thank you, David. That's right. Okay, well, I'll let you go because it's uh, getting on. You probably want to have a nice little drink or something now. And um, as I say, once again, thank you very much, Philip and Ronald Kinsella. Thank you, David. Th- thank you very much, David. Thank you so much. It's been fantastic talking to you. And good night to you too, and I'll see you soon. God bless, David. Bless Take you. care of yourself and your lovely mum, Sandy. Yes, and love to Jill, please, and the pooch Yeah, I've got to go see who won there. Obviously, I think England won, <laughs> after the oh, noise she was making downstairs. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. 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 Right, you've been listening to Paranormal Dimensions on the Paranormal UK Radio Network. I'm David Young. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you. Good night. Unidentified flying objects, commonly known as flying saucers, do exist. Some kind of flying objects have been photographed in the sky. If they cannot be identified as objects known to man, what are they? If they are not man-made, who made them? If they are not from this planet, where are they from? Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network. Create a problem. It could be uh, a manufactured virus. You want a reaction and you want them to either say do something or you want them to accept what the authorities suggest must be done. So one of the agendas is to massively cull the population. They want to reduce the numbers.